Thank you to everybody who's joining us today. My name is Della Rucker. I am the principal of the Wise Economy Workshop and the communications manager for the American Business, American Independent Business Alliance. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome today. Thank you for joining us for another installation of Accelerate Us Dispatches from the Front Lines of the Local Economy Revolution. So I'm delighted today to have Colin Murray with us from Dane by Local. So how are you doing today, Colin? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Cool. Um, I would love to have you tell this audience a little bit about Dane by Local as an organization. Now, some folks who, who will be watching this are familiar with, with independent business alliances. Some of them aren't. So why don't you explain a little bit about how Dane by Local came to be and, you know, how you guys have, have kind of grown over time, as well as, you know, what the full range of programming is. We're going to focus in on one, I think, in this conversation, but I want to have folks to have the big picture. Yeah. So Dane by Local is... Um, uh, been around for 16 years. We're all about supporting local businesses. So 16 years ago, there were two individuals that had basically a germ of an idea. Wouldn't it be great if we could support local businesses? Um, and so they came together with uh, a number of leaders in the Madison area here, Madison, Wisconsin, to um, try to pull something together. So I didn't uh, go to the first meeting. I, I was in the second meeting uh, in uh, putting this all together. And when I first looked at it, it was like, I'm not quite sure what this is all about, but I'll stick with it um, and just keep checking it out. And um, it, it grew in, in popularity and, and uh, some of the leaders in Madison uh, really took, uh, took uh, an interest in what was taking place here. And that really helped to get things started, to get it generated here. So, um, you know, the first meeting, there were like 12 or 15 people that were at that meeting. Uh, for a breakfast event, and you know we we grew uh, from there. And that was about fifteen years ago, you said. Yeah, sixteen years ago now that uh, we've been around. Wow. So yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was on the planning committee when we first uh, put everything together, and then eventually we formed a nonprofit, and so I was on the first nonprofit board, um, and we had a president uh, that did a really nice job and got things uh, uh, up and started. She ran for two years was, as mm -hmm. president. And I was, I think I was secretary or something of that nature at that point. And I assumed that the vice president would become president, right? Um, he was a bank president here in Madison, mm -hmm. home savings. And he's like, you know, I'm just too busy. I can't do this. Colin, why don't you be uh, president? And I'm like, really? <laughs> he's like, I don't know anything about this. And he's like, I'll help you. I'll help you. But uh, um, so I stepped into the role of president, awesome. and um, at that point, we had about 400 members um, when I became president. Um, so two years later, then we had gotten to over 650 or something like that um, at that point, and it was a full-time job, and mm. I already had a full-time job. And so I went to the board at the end of my two years, and it's like, we're going to have to hire somebody because nobody's going to be able to do this. Um, I'm working two full-time jobs and killing myself and I believe in the cause, but we need to hire somebody. And they're all like, okay, fine. We're going to hire somebody. Colin, you want to be executive director? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <more> because, uh, <laughs> it uh, can happen. So um, everything just fell into place. I really wasn't looking for another job. Um, at the time, I, I was working for a newspaper. I loved what I was doing, but it was a lot of the same people that I was working mm -hmm. with. I was in sales for the newspaper. It was all independent businesses, and this is independent businesses. So, um, so I took over executive director. That was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So it's been fun to watch the organization grow. And um, at one point, we had 823 members was our peak, and then we've come back down. Uh, although. 
in recent months here with what's been taking place, our membership is starting to really take off again. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if we, we surpass that 823 number uh, here in the next uh, year or so. Fabulous. Fabulous. And what's, what all does Dane by Local do in addition to the program that's kind of consuming the lion's share of your energy right now? Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about supporting local businesses. So um, a lot of people here are familiar with our networking events that we do. So we have um, a morning breakfast that we do six times a year uh, every other month. And then on the opposite months, we have an evening social. Um, so oh. it's, uh, that way we can highlight some of the various businesses that are out there. We go into their facilities. You get to do a little tour. They get to show their uh, business off to the membership. Um, you know, so it's, it's a nice cross promotion between the two. But depending upon what the organization, the, the business that's joining us is looking for, we have all sorts of different benefits. So some people want to be in our uh, printed directory that we put together. Uh, so uh, we do that once a year, and that's why they remember, because they want to be in the directory. Other people want to be on the uh, website and be listed in the uh, directory there. So that's uh, available to them. Other people want to take advantage of uh, media discounts that we provide uh, from our members and to our members. And so that's why they're a member. You know, so there's all these different benefits that they can have. Hmm. Uh, and it continues to grow. The list uh, grows. Um, one of the things we were working on just before the world fell apart, literally, was a loyalty program for uh, uh, all of our members. Um, that was really gaining a lot of traction, a lot of interest. So you would use this loyalty app on your phone, go mm -hmm. into any Dane by local member that's participating. When you purchase something, you, you register it on the app and you collect a certain number of points and you receive a reward uh, is generally how it works. So there was a lot of interest in that and then everything fell apart. So we're hoping in, in July that we can get that back up and rolling and launch that. Uh, we were just about ready to launch it. So we got wow. to it. So, wow, yeah. that's impressive. Was that something that, you know, one of the, um, one of the things that often mm -hmm. pre presents a barrier to um, IBAs and similar organizations is they go, oh, that's like, you know, tech stuff and, and I don't know how to do that and, and all of that kind of thing. So before we move on to, to what we were going to talk about, how did you handle the, the technology on the loyalty program, the building, the app and, and all that? Was that a, something you were able to purchase or was that something that someone built or how'd that work? Yeah, so it's already put together. It was not anything that we did. Um, they had the app put together and it's already been tested in a different market. Um, and they actually reached out to me through Amoeba. Um, mm. And we talked about it at the board level and said, I offered to be the guinea pig to try this out and see how it works. Um, so, you know, so far so good, although it's not actually launched. So we'll see from there. Uh, but, um, you know, we're, we're in the testing phase, I would say, as far as Amoeba is concerned, uh, to spread this to other IBAs in the organization. But it, it has some very nice uh, benefits to it that are really very um, attractive. Uh, so, uh, again, we're, we're in the testing phase right now. So far, so good. We'll see what happens <laughs> from there. But they had everything ready to go. It's a slick system. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. I've looked at a number of loyalty programs, and there's always some glitch or problem or it doesn't fit or whatever. And this one answers every, everything on the list uh, so far. So, so we'll awesome. see what happens. Awesome. Yeah. Um before, one more thing before we move on, and that's can you give folks, you mentioned that Dane by Local is, the Dane there is Dane County, the county seat of which is Madison, Wisconsin, which is also the state capital, which is also the home of the University of Wisconsin. So go Badgers. I'm not, I'm a Northwestern graduate. I'm not allowed to say that, but you know, bleh, okay. Um, I had to take a picture on the Badgers lap one time. That was, oh, uh, yeah. I, I figured they were going to, you know, pull my NU card for, for that <laughs> one. Um, the, so, so give people, people may have all sorts of kind of perceptions of what 
Madison and Dane County may or may not be. So can you kind of paint the picture a little bit um, so that we have an accurate, accurate idea going forward? Yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of people think of us as being a progressive town and to some degree, that's probably true. We get compared to Austin, Texas um, a, a lot. Um, Austin is much bigger than us. We're about a half million people in the county. Um, so, you know, we're substantially smaller than they are. Um, but we love Austin, it's great uh, IBA there, uh, part of Amoeba as well. Um, so one of the things that influences us a lot here in Madison that nobody even knows about is technology. So we have um, a company called Epic Systems, which when you go to the doctor and he sits in front of his computer and he's typing all this stuff in, there's a one out of two chance he's using an Epic program from here in Madison. Um, that's where it was devised. So they have about half of the entire medical community nationwide that are using the Epic program, and that's here in Madison. So they have 10,000 people working at Epic. Um, here. Um, it's it's uh, a very cool space. It's it's like Google, you know, it's set up the same kind of way. They're growing very fast. Um, it just the, the uh, they do tours of the, the buildings that are out there. It's just a sprawling uh, campus uh, out there. And it has a major influence on Madison, um, as far as the economy is concerned. Um, so that's doing quite well. Uh, staff out there are highly compensated and that all influences the city. So uh, there's good and bad to that. You know, there's some great stuff that is brought to the city because of that. Um, some resources that we would not normally get because we're too small. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of Epic, those things come to Madison. Uh, but it also pushes prices up here. So housing is expensive uh, compared to the rest of the state. We're higher here than Milwaukee, as far as mm -hmm. real estate is concerned. Rents are higher, you know, so forth and so on. So there is some downside to that as well. But um, so we have a nice blend between the university, government, private sector, technology, uh, healthcare is a big uh, thing here. So we've got a nice blend that really protects us from a lot of the downturns that uh, many communities experience in the economy. We're, we're somewhat insulated from that. Not that we don't feel the effects, we do, uh, but I don't think we feel it as deep. In fact, there was an article last week in Forbes Mad uh, magazine that listed Madison as being one of the top 10 cities that will recover quickest from the pandemic. Uh, so yeah, just because we've got that, that nice blend of different things here. Um, if one thing goes down, if, if Epic, goes down the tubes, which I don't expect it to happen anytime soon. But if it was, we've still got these other things we can fall back on uh, so it doesn't crush our economy. We're not based on just one, um, one segment of the economy here. So that's a nice uh, arrangement for us. Good, good, good. So with that, with that backdrop, and there's, there's hundreds of small businesses, many of whom are members or apparently now becoming members mm -hmm. of Dane by Local, but a huge amount in addition. And Madison, in addition to what you've described, also does have, uh, have, po have poverty. There are um, areas that are dominated by people who are of lower income and economic backgrounds. You know, there's, there's a range there. Um, so you have a, an initiative on your hands right now in response to um, the, the COVID pandemic that is of a scale that nobody else is encountering, certainly not who's running it at a, a nonprofit IBA level um, in the country. So can you give us the broad overview of what that program looks like? Yeah, so this is uh, something that originated with Dane County themselves. So Dane County, let's back up just a little bit, is a member of Dane by Local, um, which uh, when they signed up, I think it was about 11 or 12 years ago that they signed up as a member. They were the first government entity anywhere in the nation mm -hmm. to sign up for uh, a by local program. Um, Joe Parisi is the county executive here. He really believes in supporting 
small businesses. So they, they set the standard. And what happened with that then is some of the cities around the county noticed that they were a member and it's like, oh, we should be a member too. So the city of Madison, uh, city of Middleton, city of Fitchburg, city of Sun Prairie uh, are all members of Dane by Local. Uh, as well. So that's nice. Those are the major cities in the county uh, that we have here between the city, mm -hmm. Madison, and the suburbs. So um, they've really set the standard as far as the county is concerned. And um, when the crisis happened, when the pandemic was in full swing there, uh, the end of March, uh, we really, things in here in Madison started shutting down about the 15th of March. So about a week later or so, I got a call from the county executive's office saying, we want to help small businesses. What can we do? And I said, well, I just got off the phone with a few other amoeba uh, leaders from around the country. You know, we're all uh, wringing our hands trying to figure out how we're going to do, what are we going to do? And Austin, Texas and Louisville, Kentucky, were both trying to put together a grant program uh, through, the, through the government in each of those areas. And I said, that'd be great if we could put something together here in Madison. And he says, let me talk to Joe, Joe Parisi, and I'll get back to you. 12 hours later, he calls me back and he says, we're going to give you $250,000 uh, to put towards a grant program. Do you want to run it? I'm like, yeah, I want to run it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out here. Why did they want you to run it? So because, number one, they're a member of Dane by Local. They, they knew me. They had a connection with me. Um, they knew that we had a connection with uh, many small local businesses here in the area. Um, it was a nice fit between the two organizations. So and you already had the rep, you had already established, what kind of reputation do you think you had established that, I don't want to stop the story, but, but I want to make sure that we, you know, kind of really understand what the basis was for this being able to. Yeah, it's really happen. because I had a relationship with Joe Parisi and his office. That's really where this all came from. I, they would not have probably called me out of the blue if it had not been for that relationship that I had. So, um, you know, to develop that just a little bit here, um, mm -hmm. each time I had an opportunity to have Joe Parisi uh, speak at an event, I was inviting him. So he could come to our breakfast events. Um, he could come to our, our uh, evening socials. Those weren't, I mean, he did that from time to time, uh, but not, you know, on a regular basis. But we mm -hmm. do a press conference every year for Independence Week and for Shift Your Shopping, now called uh, um, Shop ND Local, um, mm -hmm. which is tied in with Small Business Saturday. So we do two press conferences a year. Every single time I invite him to come, and I think he's maybe, maybe missed one. Uh, for some reason, he's come and spoken at each of those press conferences. And the advantage to me, other than having Joe there, obviously, is a good thing. But the press follows him wherever he goes. So I get press to come to my press conferences that probably wouldn't have come otherwise um, if I didn't have uh, a government official. Mm -hmm. So I make sure to invite the, the uh, county executive and mayors uh, from the various cities uh, so that uh, uh, press is following them around. And it's, again, because of that relationship. So um, it's Josh Westcott that I talk to at uh, the county most often. You know, Josh will just call me and, you know, he, they're, they're working on a big project on uh, some county property right now that's expanding it. And they would like small businesses to be involved in that program. Mm -hmm. So he came over to my office and we brainstormed for an hour or so and how can we include these small businesses in the project? You know, stuff like that, um, that uh, we have this great connection between us. So um, that, that's right. really where this all came from. It's, right. it's right. all about relationships. Well, it's all about a relationships. It's all about the fact that you've been in that context, but you've also been really intentionally cultivating those oh, yes. relationships. And I think that's something that, you know, many organizations would like to have good relationships with their um, elected officials or appointed officials. Um, and to be to be clear, a county executive in Wisconsin is elected, if I remember correctly. Yep. Okay, so so this is a gentleman who has to, you know, there's a reason why the press is following him around. Yeah. Um, 
and there's a reason why he's taking the opportunities he can get to to speak up. Um, And I think a lot of times people underestimate that whether you're a more progressive community or even a more conservative community, um, the everybody wants to support small businesses, at least, you know, in theory, it's, it's kind of puppies and kittens at the abstract level. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're cute. They're (laughs) not really, but you know what I mean. Um, Okay. So I think those are a couple of really, really, really crucial pieces. And and I am really glad to hear how intentional you've been about building that relationship. But that building has also been part of this grant process going forward. And of course, with COVID, everything is compressed and everything's happening way fast. But you were starting to tell how you you had this conversation and he called you and said, hey, what can we do? And yeah. then you told oh, this man. story. Yeah. Um, and he came back and he said, so so he came back and he said, okay, we've got two, 250,000 and, and he wants you to run it instead of county economic development or chamber or whoever else. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. They just don't have the capacity at the county level to do this. Um, so, yeah. So, so he, he said, here's $250,000. You put it together. You know, we'll, we'll oversee it, but, but you handle it, basically. Um, so we started uh, putting the word out there. We get, we're getting applications. Uh, about a week later, he calls me up. And he says, how's it going? And I said, it's going great. I mean, we're going to go through the $250,000 in no time flat. Um, but, you know, people are very appreciative of it. And um, he said, well, well, would it help if I found some more money? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that would help. And he so, says, well, let me talk to Joe and I'll get back to you. And, and so, before, you, before you come up with that answer, give me, give me some kind of sense of how many responses so you put out that initial word. You said, we got a quarter of a million. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dane County. Um, first of all, what was it available for? Yeah, so it was uh, for small businesses, any small business. You didn't have to be a member of Dane by a local uh, mm-hmm. in Dane County uh, that, uh, you know, as long as they were in Dane County and the funds were going to stay in Dane County, that, mm-hmm. that's really what they were interested in. So, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. And so, so it was for pretty much anything, pay your rent, pay your people. Any, pay your... any business expense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. how many, at that point, at the point when he called you, how many applicants ballpark do you think yeah, you I had? Yeah, I think there were maybe three or 400 applications that we received in a week. Oh, um, in a week? In a week. Yeah. Yeah. So that was with very little promotion. You know, I mean, it got a little bit of news uh, coverage out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it got attention very quickly. So, um, so he went back to Joe and 12 hours later after that second conversation, he calls me up and he says, I found another $550,000. So a total of $800,000. And I'm like, great. So, and uh, and we can imagine that there might be a quarter million laying around at a, you know, a big County, there might be a quarter million you could scrape together from somewhere. (laughs) Where did this half a million plus come from? So they had a essentially a slush fund. Um, okay. Just they had just put it away, and you know, here's a perfect reason to to use the money. So it was just uh, tucked away, and you know, there it was. So awesome. um, yeah, yeah. So a week goes by. He calls me up again. Josh calls me and says, "How's it going?" I said, "It's going great. I have 800 applications." <sighs> And, you know, and I have, I think at that point, it was $27 million worth of requests. And he says, oh, okay. Well, let me see if I can find some more money. <laughs> now, These this are good friends took, to have. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It took me a little longer to get a call back from him. I think it was a day later. The funds had just been sent to the county from the federal government um, in the third package from, uh, from the federal government. And he says, I see a line in here for this uh, directions for the county that says that some of the funds could be used for small businesses. I think I might be able to get a million dollars or so uh, to add to your program. And I'm like, that'd be awesome. So he says, well, let me talk to Joe and let me talk to the attorneys and make sure we've got this you know, covered. 
I'm like, okay, great. We're a little Thanks. more complicated now. We got to bring in the attorneys. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it took him a little longer to get back to me, um, a couple days. And I'm thinking maybe a million dollars. And he, at the same time, he tells me, keep this under your hat. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a million dollars. Bursting at the seams, right? Yeah. Uh, so he calls me back and he says, well, yeah, the attorneys say everything's good. Joe is good with this. We, we crunched the numbers and we're going to give you $10 million. And I'm like, did he say that right? And like, <laughs> 10 million? I'm expecting 1 million. Mm -hmm, and he's like, mm -hmm. no, no, $10 million. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he says, we want to do a press, this was like on a Thursday, I think it was. He says, we want to do a press conference on Sunday. And I'm like, okay, all right, great, great. Um, now I haven't been out of the house, you know, at all since March 15th. Um, and this is uh, May, early May, May 1st or 2nd, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we made arrangements with one of our members that we could do it outside in her parking lot, uh, outside her store. She has a music store here in town. Um, it was a very nice uh, day and it was a nice arrangement. Everybody was able to be spaced out in the driveway. Um, it didn't look like there were a lot of people there, but there actually were. They were just all spread out, um, yeah. is what it was. Um, so we had a very nice turnout for the press conference. And Joe made the formal announcement, uh, putting it out there. One of the TV stations live streamed it on Facebook for us. Um, so that was nice. And uh, we got lots of exposure. Well, then applications just exploded. So now we have well over 4,000 applications uh, that we're dealing with. Um, so we've, so far we've put out about $3.5 million uh, of the grant. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So we'll probably go through the entire $10 million in the next month or so. Um, you know, we're, we're being very careful about, you know, passing it out and who it goes to and all that sort of thing. Um, so um, it's a major undertaking. I actually have eight people helping me with the program. Not all of them are full time, but uh, uh, doing various things uh, to make sure we've got everything in order and, and doing it properly. So, um, so yeah, wow. so that's that's where we're at at this point. It, it's obviously it's taken over my my you know life, um, you know, but but it's a good thing. And you know, yesterday I was on the phone with a woman um, that didn't see the email. She mm. knew she was getting a grant, but she didn't realize how much. And she's tell she had a, a dog grooming business, and she's telling me how she um, um, didn't have any business, you know, just went down to zero, and now it's starting to come back. But she's way behind on her bills, and she was wondering uh, what what uh, what she was going to be receiving. And I, you know, she thought she was getting a thousand dollars for some reason. I don't know where where she got that number, but um, uh, I said, well, I've got good news for you we're writing a check for $4,500 <laughs> and she started uh, crying on the phone, you know, and just, it just the relief, you know, that she yeah. was feeling that uh, she was going to get these funds. She was going to be able to keep her business. She was going to be able to survive all of this crap uh, because of, because of this grant program. She doesn't have to pay it back. You know, just here it is. There's a couple of things that she needs to do to, to verify what she's spending it on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some um, um, expectations there. But this is a business that would have been out of business if it hadn't been for the program. And I, I get tons of thank yous from people uh, as we send out the notices. You know, it's, it's very uh, gratifying to me that we're able to do this. And it really yeah. has put... Dean by local on a whole new level um, here in, in the area, you know, a, a high degree of respect and appreciation for what we're doing. And, it, you know, it, we're ha thrilled to be involved in this, but it's really because of the county and what they're able to do uh, mm -hmm. that this is all coming together. Uh, so, you know, as much as I'd love to take all of the credit, I can't, you know, this, is, this has really been because of Joe and his staff uh, that all of this has come together. So, yeah. Well, and, 
and Joe and his staff having that kind of trust and faith in you guys in Dane by Local to be able to administer that, which your typical grant program, yeah, that can be that can be extraordinarily onerous to to administer under regular circumstances. What you took on is basically building the airplane while you're flying it. Yes. And to my knowledge, you guys had never administered a grant program before. Is that correct? No, no, I had applied for grants. I, oh, I yeah, yeah, that's different. Process, but I've never <laughs> run a grant program. Um, so, yeah, we l learned some things very quickly. I pulled in people that have done grant programs, so that definitely helped. Uh, one of them had a program, uh, 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 a program, a computer program uh, that uh, we we're able to plug into. Um, it's a really slick program that has really saved us a lot of uh, grief uh, being able to use that. Um, so, you know, again, it's all about who you know and connections and, you know, being able to call in some favors uh, that we're able to pull this off. Were the people that you were going to for help, were they at the county? Were they at other agencies? Were, where, where was that? Where were the people that you went to? Because I'm also yeah. still trying to understand, you know, did the county, I presume the county had to help you set it up and administer it properly according to the regs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, and this, again, has been a very much a learning lesson as far as uh, government is concerned, because I've never worked for government and procedures and policies that they need to follow, you know, and I understand all of that. But a lot of the favors that I pulled in were from members. So... <laughs> I have a number of nonprofit organizations uh, that are member of Dane by Local. Um, and so I was able to go to them and say, okay, here's $10 million. Can you help me? Uh, you know, people have been great about it. Um, and, and, you know, everybody's been very, very supportive um, awesome. in, in putting this together. So it definitely has been, you know, been a benefit for everyone. Wonderful. That's, it's a fabulous story and we'll have to check back in with you in, you know, a month or two and, and kind of see how this all shook out when you, you got through your mad rush of giving money away, which is not really what you're doing. You know, yeah. I have run grant programs before and it's like, you know, it's not as fun as it looks. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've just got a couple of minutes left. Is there, do you have any advice what, what advice would you give to somebody um, who was walking into a situation like you were in in early March um, based on what you know now? Yeah, you know, it, um, it, again, it's really, I hate to beat this to death, but it's really all about relationships. And, um, you know, when I was early in my career, I heard that being said to me you know, build those relationships and, and do that. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. What do I do? You know, and it just, um, um, but as I've gone through the years and I've been doing this a while now, um, you know, it, it, that is very, very true. And it's probably one of the best pieces of advice I received a long time ago. And the way to build relationships, um, you know, with somebody that you want to be connected to is just continually reaching out to them. So, you know, early in my career, because I was in sales with the newspaper, uh, building that relationship meant sending an email when you saw that they were mentioned in press. So if uh, one of the uh, bookstore, you know, was, was talked about in uh, uh, a news coverage of some sort, I would send that link to them. Obviously, they probably already knew it, but it, you know, they already knew that it was taking place. But it's like, hey, Sally, this is great. I love the interview you did. Here's the link. Um, and, you know, just reach out to them. Or, or um, if I read an article in a newspaper that I thought might be of interest to, to them, um, maybe it's office supplies, you know, send that to Rose and say, you know, I saw this link uh, on an article. I thought you might be interested in it. Here you go. Um, so not asking for a sale, not asking for anything from them. Just here's something that I thought you might be interested in. And that's how you build relationships, just reaching out to them and not expecting anything in return. You know, many times all people reach out to me and it's like, I want to meet with you and I've got the best thing since sliced bread. And it's like, you know what? I hear that every other day. 
You know, I just, I don't have time for all of that. You know, but if you give me a piece of uh, material that's of interest to me, I'm going to reply back to you and I'm going to be a little more attentive to whatever you're up to. That, that happened just the other day. Somebody reached out to me. He received a grant. He thanked me for the grant. He said, I would like to do something for Dane by Local. He had an idea. Mm. And the next thing you know, I'm looking at his website. And it's like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And we're now meeting next week. But it's because of the way he approached it to me is why I responded. I probably otherwise would have just blew up, blown him off. And, you know, if he said, I want to meet with you and tell you all about my, my uh, product. Uh, yeah. I don't have time. You know, I just, I just don't have the time. So yeah. it's all the way that you uh, attract those um, um, people and, and build those relationships. That's, that's the key to sitting with 10, who would have guessed I'd be sitting with $10 million, you know, just not in my wildest dream would I have ever guessed that, you know, and here we are uh, handing out funds to, to keep businesses alive. Pretty, pretty good situation. Yeah. And it's a fabulous story. And of course that $10 million isn't your budget, but it has helped you support people on your staff. It's helped you. Uh, I believe you added a cup of a oh, yeah. person or two. Okay. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, the ripple effects are enormous. Um, and it's a, it's a, a heck of a, of a story, but I think your insight on that relationship building people who work in particularly in the nonprofit sector and in especially organizations that have kind of a membership focus. So often we forget to do that. Yep. So, and, and we forget, we, we don't see what the value would be of relationships that maybe aren't square within the wheelhouse that, you know, we're supposed to be taking care of. Exactly. So that's fantastic. I know you got a scoot. Um, this is, this is absolutely Excellent, excellent information, and we will definitely have, I'll be talking to you through Amoeba, but we'll have to have you um, or someone from your staff come back and kind of give us the update in a couple of months. Sure, um, we'd be happy to do so. Wonderful, Absolutely. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll, I'll tag some stuff on the end to talk about where people can find this information. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. We had a couple of technical glitches getting started today, but uh, I'm really, really glad to be able to share this information with folks. And uh, you guys are kind of kicking butt. Great. So, well, thank you for having me. I, I do appreciate it. And we'll look forward to the, the next um, Amoeba, American Independent Business Alliance Conference, will be in Madison next year. So we're yeah, looking forward April. to April. April 22nd, I think, is uh, the start of that. So we're looking forward to that uh, show yeah. off our city. Yes, and, and they're good at showing off. Not in a bad way. They got, they got good stuff to show. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. Great. Thanks a ton. Thanks a ton. This three on play the time to speak the truth. Unreasoning, unjustified terror, which parallel.